You're watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Avers. Today's topic, interventional pain management. If you are in pain or a loved one is in pain, you have to hear what my first guest has to say. He's an interventional pain management uh, specialist. In fact, he uh, is, is the founder of the Society uh, of pain man Interventional Pain Management Physicians. With us, we have Dr. Manchikanti. Dr. Manchikanti, welcome to the program. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here and uh, let people know what we are doing. Okay, good. Now, you have 14 locations spread out. Where, where are your locations? Uh, my main location is in Paducah, Kentucky, and my partner's main location is in Evansville, Indiana. Then we have multiple locations in Indiana and uh, Kentucky, including Louisville, okay. Hopkinsville, Madisonville, Owensboro. We also have one location in Illinois, Marion, Illinois, and then one location in uh, Tennessee. Today's topic, you know, one of the reasons we invite you on the program is for this show, most people are afraid of surgery, right? That's correct. Uh, fusion surgery, especially. And we're talking about maybe possibly how to avoid that in, in, in the future. We should also mention, you've written medical text. You know, I told my uh, my team here, these are the, he's written the two most boring books for a lay person, right? These, and I'm reading, I'm going, I don't even understand what, what this is about. So this is for doctors. These are for doctors, and that is a very well-published book, and uh, it is selling quite a bit. You've written uh, like 14 books or something. Total of 14 for books, right. And I have written about 500, more than 500 articles, uh, peer-reviewed articles. I have conducted a lot of randomized double-blind control trials and we have written multiple guidelines. So now we have a definition for uh, interventional pain management okay. and a specialty designation. And we also have membership on Career Advisory Committee, which actually regulates in each state the, what is covered and what is not covered. Okay, good. And, and just about everything we're talking about today is covered by insurance. Yes. Medical insurance. Except the regenerative medicine. Does technique. it cost more money to go a guy like you, head of a society? Actually, no, actually it is a lot cheaper to go to me. How? Because, Why? Because we're not doing the mistakes and uh, I have extensive experience, so it is uh, easier to confirm the diagnosis and go to the treatment rather than play around. Okay. So that's why it is very important when you choose a, a interventional pain physician, where you go and how they treat you. One of the things you need to know, know is that is this doctor certified is the doctor have ex proper training, like fellowship nowadays. In olden days, when I was doing, there was no fellowship training. Fellowship is basically after medical school and you go to specialized training? Fellowship is even after that. Residency is the next thing. Medical okay. school, then okay. you have four years of residency. All right. Then fellowship is one or two years. Okay. We so also you... offer uh, fellowship training in our own program. In, in your centers, all 14 years, you're offering all the new stuff? All yes. the new proven stuff, I should say? For, for pain relief and stem cells, you're also doing. That, that's correct. That's a hot Well, topic. our focus is on the physician manager practice. Every patient is seen by a physician in our practice. Okay. And then offer the current proven, acknowledged treatments and following all the rules and regulations established. So let's start with typical patients. Um, we'll start with the people, and, and since 70% of your practice is low back pain, or back pain, I should say, we're gonna talk a lot about back pain and we'll talk about shoulder and knee and neck and things like that. So who's the typical patient that you see? Well, these patients can be vary from somebody who hurts only once a month, but it can be very disabling and they want something to be done. Somebody who can't play the golf, they want to be able to play golf. Or somebody with very serious problems who has had pain for a long time, has been to multiple doctors, has tried various things, including surgery and about to be disabled or already disabled. So we get all types of patients. Now, the, the, who, who refers you the patients? So the primary care physicians, the spine surgeons, I mean, who is sending all you patients? All of them, all of okay. them send. And sometimes Neurologists. patients. Neurologists? All types of doctors. So. Are work, now, do they need a referral? I mean, to, to see you, or can they call you directly, like one of your centers? They can actually call directly, but it is better to have a referral. That way you will be able to get all the records pretty easily. Okay. And you don't have to duplicate the work. Okay. And the physician won't be upset that this, his patient is seeing someone else. So if you go and ask the physician, they will refer without any problems. Okay. Now, 
Today we're not gonna talk a lot about the pain medications. Maybe we're gonna talk about how to wean off some of those pain medications. Uh, but we're gonna talk about, we'll start with injection therapy for shoulders, uh, back, knees, things like that. And then some of the things you're doing, uh, implantable devices and, and nerve blocks and spinal cord stimulators and things like that. So let's start with uh, injection therapy. Who does that work best for? And what are you putting in there? Well, injection therapy is not like the injections you are receiving, but uh, this is a specific injection. I can show you on a mannequin if you want okay. me to. So. All right, so what are we looking at here? Is this so the lower injection, part of the spine? This is the lumbar spine, and this is what you feel when you press in the back. So the various types of injections are given here based on the pain, source of the pain. Actually, we do a lot of diagnostic blocks to find out where the pain is coming from. I'm not sure public knows it, or you may not know it either, but if you go to a doctor with your pain, we can only make a diagnosis after you had MRI, nerve conduction studies, physical examination, everything. In only about 15% of the patients, in 85%, we cannot make a diagnosis. Okay. So we can resolve that issue in another 80% of the patients by doing what is called diagnostic blocks, like we put a small needle here and do the facet joint block. We can put an epidural injection here or epidural injection like here. Like on first day, just to see if, it, if that's where the pain is coming from? It will be the second day, second okay. visit. All first right. time, first visit, you are assessing the patient and talking to get to know the patient. It is very important to know the patient. If you don't like a doctor, don't go to them. If okay. you don't like them, don't continue the treatment. So it is a shared decision making. You want to get to know the patient. My, I'm kind of old philosophical type of person. I need to know the patient. I want to talk to the patient. and. I, I want to know the patient, I want to talk to the patient. Majority of the times, I don't even read a patient's chart. That may look abnormal. Just get to know th them. But first, I want to talk to the patient. And if you talk to the patient, patient gi will give you the diagnosis in majority of the pa cases. And that's why I call it myself old-fashioned, because then I look at what the investigations are showing and confirm what we are suspecting, or we were right or wrong, and about 95% of the time, we are right. Okay, so when this person comes in with low back pain, and you're gonna do injection therapy, so let me get this straight. I mean, it's most of the back pain we're talking about is something is pushing or rubbing against the nerve. No, not no? necessarily. Okay. That is called the disc herniation. That is mechanical pain. You are talking about mechanical compression. Okay. So that is not the major cause of it. Disc herniation is easy to diagnose because it presses on a nerve. The symptoms are very easily identifiable, like your pain goes down into your leg, like an electric shock, all okay. the way into the foot. All right. Whereas majority of the problem where you have a problem is low back pain. It is deep, aching, throbbing, and there is no disc herniation. That is where the whole issue comes. So in those cases, we go ahead and uh, first uh, do the physical therapy and conservative medication, all those things. And after that, we do the diagnostic blocks to find out where the pain is coming from. Once we rule out certain structures, we will go ahead and give a different type of treatment. Or if we confirm, let us say, with facet joint pain, if we know that facet joints are causing the pain, we go ahead and treat those with the- So what, the, the facet joints are where, on this, on this spine model? The facet joints are these, are the facet right joints. There. okay. So and these so what, are they're all, rubbing together? Or what do they, I mean, what's, where, yeah, where's the pain they, coming from? they develop from? arthritis. It's just like your shoulder, knee, or okay. elbow. They develop arthritis, they develop inflammation, and then they start hurting. So you inject the area. I interrupted you, but I, I, you do a test to inject the area. Right. And, and live the on diagnosis. the spot, they start feeling better sometimes? Right, they should feel immediately. Actually, we check them immediately after we do that, if they are responding or not. Uh, if they get 80% relief, then we don't do anything else. Okay. We send them home. They come back after a month or so. Then we reevaluate how much relief they have had, and second block. then we will do the second block. And this time, they should get longer relief than the first one. Like so that six I months, half a year? No, the average relief with the diagnostic blocks is three, three weeks with the first block, about six weeks with the second block. Okay. And then we can do a therapeutic facet block if patient wants a simpler procedure, or if they are okay, we can go ahead and do what is called a radio frequency where we put the heat on it so it blocks the stimulation of the pain fibers. So the signal doesn't go to the brain? Right. And you don't That's feel correct. the pain? Right. Okay. But it regenerates and it comes back after six months. Average is a six months, but it can last in people 
a year or so, I had a patient. She had relief for about 18 years until she died. So it, that can happen. But generally, known treatment results are about six months to one year. With the nerve blocks, you can get three to six months. Sometimes you can get years. With so that. is this a big problem? Like, for example, I mean, you're in 14 locations, three or four different states. Are there like more than a half a million, millions of people that are in pain that don't have to be? As you, I mean, what's lot, your hunch? The, what there are think? many, many people, they are in pain, they don't know what to do, and the doctors, many of the times, doctors are very careful, and they try not to send them to advanced treatments, and they try to manage them, and that is how they get into different types of medications. So the primary and, care physician is usually the first person. They give them some meds, to decrease right. inflammation, they send them to physical block the therapy pain. also. Okay. Physical and therapy. The, so if that has failed, then they see you. No, they sometimes send them to the orthopedic surgeon or a neurosurgeon okay. if they have a disc herniation. But if a primary care physician thinks that there was nothing operable, then they send those to us. Now, when the patient goes to the neurosurgeon or a spine surgeon, if their doctor, th if that doctor thinks that there is nothing to be operated then they send them to us too. Okay. okay. So yeah. essentially, if we get these patients sooner, the first visit is ours, then we can manage them much better. We can direct them appropriate physical therapy, appropriate medication, behavioral management, and then they can get a lot better. We so, can when do you, the, so when you take, let's say, a construction worker or just a retired person or the golfer, as you mentioned, or the grandmother or the mother, a four, they can't bend, they can't do this. When you, on certain people, you give them these injections, right? And for some people, they're back. Even though it may only last for six months, but they're back to function, back to exercise, back, I mean, is there benefits there? Is that, that is like the main goal of our uh, pain management, interventional pain management. In, rare, in some circumstances, if we cure them, but most of the times our goal is to improve the function so they can enjoy the life. For some people, just dressing itself is the most important thing. Okay. Like uh, spinal stenosis, for example, it's also called, symptoms are related to called shopping cart syndrome. When you are going shopping, you are holding on to a cart, so your back is better. Oh, really? But so leaning forward helps get you spinal out of pain. stenosis, right. Okay. But whereas when you are on the checkout line, you don't have the cart any longer. You start hurting, pretty bad and it goes down into so the legs. So what do you do for that? So that is called spinal stenosis. So we can do the nerve blocks and injections for that, but there are also other mechanisms. You have complicated surgery, but if you have moderate or mild symptomatic stenosis, we can do a interspinous prosthesis as uh, here. These are the spinous processes. Okay. We put a pro titanium prosthesis here and here, wherever there is stenosis. And then it helps the patient pre when it prevents this this movement. So pain is when you go like so this. So it, it, it keeps, it's like the nerve is being pinched in a way? Yes, yeah. The spinal so canal. So this implantable device kind of opens it up. That's correct. Takes pressure off the nerve. Yes. Is that right? Is, is that, and you call that what? Interspinous prosthesis. Are, the trade name is Superion, the one we use, but there are few others too available. Is that right? And, the, and that works for low back pain. What are some of the other things you're doing for It is for mostly for pain? the leg pain, more than leg the pain. low back pain. In spinal stenosis, your major problem is called neurogenic claudication, where when you uh, walk, your legs hurt, and they go numb, and you feel like that heavy. Okay. Whereas when you sit down, pain goes away. So it is called neurogenic claudication. Oh, okay. So that part is the one which really helps with this part. What about sciatica? Sciatica is the disc herniation, as we were talking. When multiple nerves are involved, they call it sciatica. It is a outnumbered or outdated name. Okay. We call it radicular pain, radiculitis. Or the public radical... still calls it sciatica? Many people call it sciatica. That's that is fashion. a common name. So yeah. I need to change it from that. Okay, but. <laughs> But so what do you, how do you treat that so-called, as the lay people call so, it, so sciatica? So sciatica, that essentially means, as I was explaining to you in the before, that is the disc herniation itself. It is a mechanical disc herniation, or it could be a chemical irritation. Either one, that is where we do the injections, epidural injections. You can put a small needle into different areas, uh, like if it is in the low back, we can do the 
what is called interlaminar epidural, that is the traditional epidural everybody has known for years, or we can come on the side and do the transforaminal epidural, or we can go here and do what is called a caudal epidural. So when we do that, we inject two types of substances. One is a local anesthetic, other one is a steroid. Some people do steroids routinely, we don't in our practices because I have shown that in multiple studies I have conducted about 12 randomized control trials that local anesthetic alone itself can help you as well as with steroids. Very few patients do need steroids, so we use them in those cases. And, and what kind of steroids are you giving them? We are using, uh, there are two types. We can use uh, Depomedrol, methylprednisolone, but my preference is called Celestone. It is a beta-methazone. It is a depot steroid where you, it stays supposedly where you put it in for a long time. Okay. That's why it's called depot steroids. So, so there's a lot of people that are in pain that don't have to be. People put it off. You know, we were talking on the phone. I said, my next door neighbor, uh, or across the street, this guy's been in pain, he has insurance, he's been in pain with his shoulder when I met him a year ago, and now today he's walking around holding his shoulder all the time, and I'm saying, well, why don't you go in and at least get, after talking to you, I said, at least get looked at by an interventional pain management guy, you have insurance, get it injected. No, I'm gonna let it work itself out. Then so you told tough. me you also have a neighbor, that smart guy, that is doing nothing. There are lot, many people do that, like this uh, neighbor you were mentioning, he can develop capsulitis, adhesive capsulitis, like a frozen shoulder. If you keep pro trying to protect it, and then it goes. Then their neck start hurting. At that time, it, when it is too late, they go to a surgeon, and then we find something in the neck, something in the shoulder, it becomes too late. So, early so if you can get a guy like this early, it's a, like a, I don't want to call it a quick fix, but in a way it is. Get yeah. a guy like that out of pain. That is, you can get them out of pain, you can give the injections and p put them through an exercise program, and a lot of times these people don't even need the repeat, repeat injections. Does it hurt? Injection? Yeah, I mean, is it painful? <laughs> well, injection is uh, just like a needle, like uh, you take injection. But do they complain like, uh, like it hurts a lot, or not really? Some people do, and some people don't, especially if the people were on a lot of pain medications, and then they program their mind that this is going to be an extremely painful procedure then they're not very happy with that when we are doing. So what we do is, for patients, when we are doing the spinal procedures, we give them sedation. We do okay. that at, at no extra cost. And majority of our procedures are done in a surgery center or office suites. So we give them appropriate sedation. And, and you're doing this, uh, when you're injecting, I guess deep, I mean, you're, you're looking at it under some sort of scope? Yeah, we are looking under fluoroscopy, under x-ray machine. And so you're looking at like a monitor as you're putting in the needle. That's correct, that is extremely important. Nowadays, especially for spinal injections, uh, if you do them without fluoroscopy, you don't even get reimbursed. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so low back pain, injections, the shoulders, what about knees? The knees are the same thing. You can do them, uh, knees, uh, you can do them injection under fluoroscopy, ultrasound, okay. or even blindly because, like, I'm pretty old, so I used to do them blindly before. I don't do them blindly any longer. Knee injections are pretty easy and safe. And these are the patients, let us say you have a lot of knee problems and then injections don't help and they're re recommending surgery for you. Th that is the time you can also look into the stem cells or PRP injections. Are you seeing good results with the stem cells for knees? Stem cell, yes. The results are pretty good. The knee is the most studied organ in the body for with the stem cells, and it has been shown to be very good results. Okay. In fact, 60% uh, of the patients uh, have avoided uh, total knee surgery. The same way with our so back injections. 60% of the patients that may, maybe they were even told they need surgery, don't need surgery now. Actually, they were actually scheduled for surgery. <laughs> Is that right? So six out of 10 people scheduled Avoided. for surgery could cancel their surgery. The only problem is that insurance does not cover that. The stem cells. Right, but with the injections also, the results show that about 60% of the patients can avoid surgery. Is that right? So the, is your challenge, because look, I mean, you are the creator of this interventional pain management specialty, but is your challenge getting people just to come in early? Like when the pain is starting, like you know, you're three months into it, four months into it, six months into it, 
get right. something done. On average, if I, when I looked at my data, patients don't even come to me until 18 months after pain started. Is it the men are the worst or the women are the worst? Because men put things off. Um, both are pretty much the same. We didn't find much difference in there, how long they have had okay. pain. Because women do make decisions for men. So. Okay. Now, <laughs> now, the other thing is, you know, on YouTube, uh, and we'll put at the bottom of the screen, but you have great instructional videos. I mean, and they're dummy down. I, cl I learned a lot about all the different areas of the spine from watching, I probably watched about an hour of your videos. Very nice. Do most of your patients look at those videos before they see you? Some of them do. Not all, but some do. <laughs> to some people, they don't even care the mechanism or how it works. They just want to be out of pain. Right. Is That's that right? all they say that. What, okay. what, do you, what are you expecting from me? They just say, I don't want to be hurt okay. anymore. So. so let's talk about some of these now, the, the next level up. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, spinal cord stimulators, nerve blocks, implantable devices. We have a couple over here. Uh, so what, what, where do you want to go now? Well, we talked about the nerve blocks a little bit, and they can be done in the neck also, the radiofrequency neurotomy. Then there is also another procedure called percutaneous adhesive lysis. Like you develop a lot of scar tissue after the surgery, we can put a catheter and try to relieve the scar, scar tissue and send the medication to where the problem is. It is called targeted delivery. With a and catheter. this is an implantable device? No, it no. is just a regular device, nerve okay. block. So, right. And then patient goes home that day. And it, it can help in many, many patients. Now, when all of these fail and patients already had surgery or not candidates for surgery, we look into either a spinal cord stimulation or intrathecal infusion system. Both are external devices. What is a spinal cord stimulator? And Sp we're short on time, but uh, what spinal is it? Spinal cord stimulation is an implantable device. We put it in, in the spine. It is like a pacemaker for the spine, pacemaker for the heart. Okay. It is a pacemaker for the spine. So it stimulates the nerves. Electronically stimulates the nerve? That's what? correct. Like numbs them or interrupts the signal? No, there are two types of fibers in the spine the, which carry your impulses. The small fibers are the ones which are responsible for pain. Large fibers are not. So these go and stimulate the large fibers, which is a pleasant stimulation. So it kind of cheats and the gate is closed. That is how- So you don't get the signal to your brain that- Right, the from the small fibers are blocked. The door is closed, the small fibers are blocked. Now they're also saying that it, there are a lot of neurochemicals released and it can help in a, many other ways. But that was the original theory, that gate control theory, Melzock and Wall, it, they in, said that in 1965. Okay. So what other type of implantable devices are you doing? Other implantables is the intrathecal infusion systems where we put the device in your body. It gives you small amounts of morphine or any of the other drugs like Dilaudid, fentanyl. There are many drugs and many combinations. We can deliver on a regular fashion. So those help. The way we choose which one is good for you, if you have a regional pain, if it is just in your back and legs, we go for a stimulator. But if you have neck, mid-back, low back, and multitude of problems, then we go for a stimulator. Okay, so. For a pump, I mean. People are taking opioids, right? That's correct. Majority so, of them so are. So you're able to, in this case, instead of swallowing those pills, delivering it right to the pain? That's correct. Problem, That's so it's less dose? A lot dose? less, like, oh no, much less than that. Like if you are taking 100 milligrams, say one milligram per day would do it. Is that right? So one milligram rather than 100 milligrams. That's correct. So logically, why doesn't everybody do this? It's a more well, effective way for the right candidate? Yeah, it has to be a right candidate. It is expensive procedure. And but also, insurance covers it. Insurance cover does cover it. And again, you have to have every refills every two months. Whereas spinal cord stimulator is even better where you don't have to have anything done once you have that implanted. And many people are on extremely low doses of medication if they are. And the problem is that these people are suffering with multiple issues. If they just had a low back pain, they don't take anything, they're fine. They don't even come back to me until they have a problem or just say hi once in a while. Okay. Now for some of these people, is it like a miracle? Yes. Like, oh. like they're back to work, back to exercise? Oh, when you try an injection or a uh, stimulator, trial stimulator, they say that, oh, it is miraculous. I just want it right away. I want okay. it. I want okay. the permanent ones. Now, we should mention, too, 
your uh, you, your daughter works in one of the practices. She's a medical right. doctor, pain management. Is that right? She she works in uh, three clinics. We I work in. Now we're short on time. Couple of minutes left. What what about you know head and neck pain? Uh, what are you doing for that? The headaches are one of the commonest problems, as we know. Everybody has a headache because of many reasons. But the most of the headaches, what we can help are related to the headaches which are coming from the back of the neck. It is called occipital headache or cervicogenic headache. Also sometimes the facial pain related to trigeminal neuralgia. But most commonly they are missed. They are treated as migraine and they don't even respond. But the, their source of the pain is coming from the... Here we have this model right here. So this is the neck. This is the neck. So their source of the pain is in the top joints. This, these are the occipital nerves. This is where they form. So something is pushing on those nerves? No, they are just inflamed. Inflamed, okay. So the facet joints, which are, especially when you have whiplash, you did a lot of shows on those kinds yeah. of. So when they have whiplash, the commonest problem is the headache. So this is the cervical, cervicogenic headache. We can block those nerves or do the radiofrequency neurotomy and patients do much, much better, and then they don't exactly. have to take many of the medications they are taking. So people with headaches, you've had, the headaches go away? Headaches go away, and they are, so, even if they are there, pretty minor. So. We're out of time. So people, we, you know, we've talked about implantable devices, we've talked about uh, stimulators, lots of different things. Um, final message though, somebody watching this, they're at the early stages of pain, but it's been a long time. I mean, six months, a year, 18 months. You say it's 18 months before people do it. What's your advice to them? Well, and they're afraid of doctors, maybe. Go to the physician, whomever you feel comfortable, and let get the proper care. And uh, you have to choose proper physician, as I said, and make a sure decision-making and get better much faster. Should you look for, I mean, do you have a bias, look for an interventional uh, pain management yes, physician? Yes, just not an interventional pain. Anybody can call themselves, but it is a well-trained interventional pain physician who is going to stick around in the practice for some time. Are they called board certified or fellowship trained? That's correct. Board certified or fellowship trained. In and you can check the reputation. So. pain management. That's correct. And that's, IPM, that's interventional pain. That's who you want pain. to see. And, and you guys know all the new stuff. Yes, we keep up with the regular stuff, and we also try to project uh, the most recent modalities of treatments and we recommend physician oriented practice where physicians are in control of the practice. Okay, good. Well, you know, doctor, I want to thank you for coming on the show. We're going to have you back and people need to look. If, if you don't see this, I'm sure you'll have it on your website. Uh, we'll give that to you plus on wellnesshour.com, but we're doing a whole segment with you, a full half hour on stem cells for back pain, neck pain, knee pain, shoulder pain. So thank you for coming on the show. Good stuff. Thank you. You've been watching the Wellness Hour news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you could help. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues. 